The year is almost over already. Three more months to go. What does SpaceX have in store for us in the next 12 months with their Starship program? Hello dear YouTube family and welcome back to Liftoff. As usual, we always keep you updated with the latest news and everything related to space and everything SpaceX. In today's episode, we will look into the details after the recently publicized FAA environmental assessment, which has a treasure trove of new information of SpaceX's plans for the next 12 months. How many upcoming launches SpaceX would make within a year? Let's find out. SpaceX Starship 20 is still sitting on suborbital pad A and presumably waiting for better weather. On September the 22nd, workers had to be evacuated from their worksite three times due to stormy weather. But that didn't keep SpaceX from advancing. Despite the threat of hurricanes, Starship development in South Texas is up and running. Work continues on parts of the orbital launch tower, like the attachment structure of the rocket catching arms. And SN20 received one of its Raptor engines a couple of days ago. And it's pretty much receiving the rest of its heat shield tiles until it is replaced on Super Heavy Booster 4. The integration tower is enormous. Once the catching arms are attached to the tower, the catch system will be substantially larger than it looks right now. The system will receive powerful hydraulic actuators to be able to move heavy loads from left to right as they will be used for stacking operations. Breaking news just happened. The FAA just released their draft programmatic environmental assessment for the Starship program. This is not the government granting any permissions or licenses yet, nor does it guarantee the government agency will grant any to SpaceX for their Starship program. FAA's preferred proposed action. Again, proposed doesn't mean it will happen. The issue is one or more experimental permits or licenses to SpaceX that would allow the company to launch or land Starship Super Heavy and then take it from there, granting more permits as confidence in the program grows via tests and these orbital launches. The bottom line is it could still be months until the final EA is complete and FAA determines a path to take. SpaceX is planning five launches per year. That's not as much as expected, especially as Elon Musk has stated before that Starships will launch hundreds of missions before flying people. Five is a bit less than hundreds. Dear Moon is expected for 2023, which will be the first people to fly on a Starship. This bears the question where those launches will happen, if not in Boca Chica. It could also be a sign that the Starship program might be delayed. If there are five orbital launches within the next year, those hundreds of launches would have to be after that, which would most likely delay any human spaceflight activity on board a Starship. There is another location in which SpaceX is still planning to do Starship launches. It is the suborbital pad at Kennedy Space Center 39A. Musk has confirmed several times that the plan is still to launch starships from the Cape, which could be one of the reasons why the FAA assessment doesn't mention hundreds of launches out of Boca Chica. According to the FAA assessment, SpaceX is still internally debating whether to integrate a flame diverter and a water deluge system into the Starship orbital launch mounts or not. SpaceX has also stated in the FAA environmental assessment that they plan to launch out of Boca Chica from their sea launch platform approximately 19 miles out from the coast. One floating launch platform would be located at Deimos, where we will see five super heavy landings in the next year. The FAA assessment also states that SpaceX plans to move landed starships and super heavy boosters into Port Brownsville via a barge. The company is planning to land starships on islands in the Pacific Ocean once capabilities improve further. You might be disappointed now because of the five orbital launches. To give you some perspective, let me give you some stores from SpaceX and us. SpaceX's plan, at least for the next year, also includes up to 20 suborbital launches. This includes starships and super heavy boosters and two high altitudes. Besides the fact that there are only five orbital launches planned and up to 20 suborbital ones, there is another interesting fact here. SpaceX is planning to launch super heavy boosters without a Starship, so we will see the boosters go up alone as well. We will have a total of 25 launches in the next 12 months. That's almost a launch every other week. If SpaceX can do this, there will be an incredible amount of action in Boca Chica. Constant prototype construction, testing static fires and launching conducted on a bi-weekly basis. Constant iteration of the design. 
and continuous improvement of manufacturing capabilities. So, even though you might have seen the headlines depicting all of this as very little, it is the opposite. SpaceX also clearly mentions that most launches will end in the water and that many of those won't even be recovered. They state, though, that we will see at least five super heavy landings on sea launch platforms. Plans for the second integration tower and orbital launch mount have also been confirmed once more. So the construction efforts at the launch site won't end either. The crane will stay. The work will continue at ever increasing pace. The new Raptor 2 engine facilities Elon Musk gave us heads up about back in July are now under construction in McGregor, Texas, where SpaceX engines are tested. This will help to push more engines to Starbase in less time and will be needed since each Starship Super Heavy rocket requires no less than 32 sea level Raptors. RaptorVac and new experimental designs will continue to be built at SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, California. Now it's time to talk a little bit about SN21 and Super Heavy Booster 5 latest updates. Jumping back to Orbital Launch Mount Pad once more reveals that SpaceX has been very busy again. SpaceX team moved quick disconnect arm extension to the Orbital Launch Site. And outside the nose cone looks like it is Ship 21 nose cone. Correct me if I am wrong, this is a close-up view of the quick disconnect arm arriving at the orbital launch. Self-propelled modular transporter moved back. In the background, the crane is attached to the outer shell 5. Work continues on the permanent stairs platform. On September 19th, and inside the high bay, another section was added and stacked to Super Heavy Booster 5. Elon Musk explains the fundamentals of developing a launch transmission to Mars. It has to be affordable to go. We have to develop rockets that are rapidly and close to completely reusable as possible. Tesla owners Austin said. Elon Musk responded. To be precise, completely and immediately reusable orbital rockets are the fundamental breakthrough needed to make life multiplanar. And talking about cooperation with China, Musk said. Some amount of cooperation would be good. Long March 7 launched Tianzhou 3 cargo spacecraft, carrying about 6 tons of cargo to Tiangong Space Station. Tianzhou 3 cargo spacecraft and space station assembly complete autonomous rapid rendezvous and docking, according to the China Man Space Engineering Office. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know your opinion about it in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe to the Liftoff channel and hit the notification button if you want to watch more interesting space niche news. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again.